The first induction agent we're going to talk about is the one that you'll use most often, propofol, also called 2,6-diisopropylphenol. It's a phenol derivative, as you can see from the drawing here, with isopropyl groups at positions 2 and 6. So firstly, the dose of propofol depends on what you're using it for. A standard induction dose of propofol is 1.5 to 2.5 milligrams per kilo. If you're running infusion of propofol for maintenance of anesthesia, it's 4 to 12 milligrams per kilo per hour, or if just for sedation, 0.3 to 4. Propofol is presented as either a 1% or 2% lipid emulsion. In the anaesthetic room, you'll pretty much always use 1%, and that normally comes in a 20 mil vial. So that's 200 milligrams in a vial. Because it's so hydrophobic, it has to be suspended in soybean oil, glycerol, egg phosphatide, sodium hydroxide, and water. Propofol is a weak acid. The actual lipid emulsion has a pH of seven, but propofol itself has a pKa of 11, meaning that at physiological pH, it's almost entirely unionized and that gives it a very large volume of distribution. So although its elimination half-life is actually several hours, its effects only last a few minutes because it's rapidly distributed to peripheral body compartments. Propofol is metabolized by the liver, so 30 to 60 mils per kilo of plasma are cleared of propofol every minute. In terms of its pharmacodynamic effects, let's look at propofol's effect on the central nervous system first. Propofol acts by potentiating GABA receptors in the central nervous system, so it can be used as an anticonvulsant. It reduces cerebral blood flow and therefore intracranial pressure, and also reduces the cerebral metabolic rate for oxygen, so actual oxygen demand by the brain. Some excitatory movements can be caused by propofol, and in epileptics, emergence from anesthesia can sometimes result in seizures. In terms of the respiratory effects of propofol, propofol does suppress the respiratory drive, particularly the response to hypercapnia. Laryngeal reflexes are also significantly depressed, which makes propofol a really good choice if you plan on citing a supraglottic airway. For a mechanism involving nitric oxide, propofol causes vasodilatation and therefore reduced systemic vascular resistance. And it also reduces myocardial contractility which may or may not be compensated for by a tachycardia. And lastly, in terms of its GI effects, propofol does have antiemetic properties. So there's an overview of propofol for you. Now let's move on to see how other induction agents differ.